any normal and right-minded person would agree that there oh, here we go. would agree that there are justifiable concerns about the animals escaping their confines. Animal Antics is a comedy set in a zoo sometime in the near future, and it follows two protagonists, Sarah, uh, a woman in her mid-twenties, and a talking dog called Whoopsie. Now, sure, the mammals seem cute, and as you know, I'm a massive fan of meerkats myself, but, but when they're swarming your local leisure centre. And, and of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg, because Next, you'll have the birds. And worse. It's in a world where the wild has ceased to exist. The dog, Whoopsie, which is very proud that it's a pedigree, doesn't understand what the wild is. When the wild is described to, or explained to the dog, it thinks it is a, a terrifying prospect. It was um, like in the park, but with no humans about and stuff, just animals. Who cut the grass then? No one cut the grass. The animals ate the grass and there were more trees and then um, sometimes sand. OK, well, so who fed the animals? Like I said, they ate the grass, I think. Sounds horrid. Or sometimes they ate themselves. What? Oh, yeah. That used to be a thing. The film follows the pair as they sort of proceed from cage to cage, uh, not unlike viewers sort of going around an art gallery. It sort of slowly develops into being a, I guess, a parable about how we might value the other or how we can or could attach value to things that we don't understand. Whoopsie doesn't understand the concept of the wild. The dog then sort of takes on this bias against the other animals, um, wants to keep them locked up, keep them separated. And in, in so doing, the dog starts echoing uh, more familiar human xenophobic uh, phrases and ways of talking about culture and otherness. At one point, the dog starts chanting, lock them up, lock them up in an echo of Trump's followers. I can't, I can't understand that. I can't understand your jibber-jabbering, fatty soy boys. Be nice, whoopie do. The early influence for making the film came from reading Why Look at Animals, which is an essay by John Berger. Uh, he has some wonderful lines in the, in the essay uh, about, I guess he's referring to Disney and cartoons and the anthropomorphization of animals um, and how we engage with the wild uh, through culture. So I realised in reading it that there are probably more polar bears on my daughter's pyjamas than there were wild in the, in the Arctic. I think the second scene we encounter is the talking meerkats. Uh, and these are little meerkats that are, that are sort of chirping repeated phrases en masse um, that they seem to have learnt by rote. And Sarah, the main character, proposes that they have just been uh, trained to say these things. Um, so they, they start by saying, hey, hey, hey you! What is your name? It's not deaf, Whoopsie, it just doesn't understand you. What is your name? Whoopsie asks them their name in a similar way that some people might speak to people who English isn't their first language. They answer that their name's Eliza. Eliza, Eliza. Uh, Eliza is also the name of the first computer to pass the Turing test. In other words, the first computer to supposedly fool uh, a human into thinking that it was itself human. Uh, it's also the name from the, lead, uh, from the protagonist in My Fair Lady, um, in, in which the, she's sort of taken from the streets and taught how to, how to speak proper, uh, taught how to speak posh and, and sort of like pass, essentially, in, um, upper, in upper society. 
They should make the lion speak. Well, if a lion could speak, I mean, actually speak English, we couldn't understand it anyway. I could. No, you couldn't. It'd be like, Adal huff, Adal puff. That's wolves. Adal blow your house down. That's wolves. Sarah explains this sort of pronouncement by Wittgenstein that the lion's world is so alien to us and ours to, to it that uh, the points of reference are, uh, would be unintelligible. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. That's more like a human type thing to say, isn't it? Everything the light touches is our kingdom. <laughs> it's, it's from the Lion King, Sarah. I mean, it's definitely a lion type of thing to say. Whoopsie gets it all wrong and, and sort of proves that a lot of language is, starts off at least by us parroting um, what we've been sort of taught to say and what we've been taught is an appropriate response to, to given prompts. The zoo is an example of a heterotopia in the sense that it uh, jams together uh, several spaces that might otherwise be incompatible with each other into one place. Sarah and Whoopsie uh, meander through the, the, the zoo at a very leisurely pace uh, and one minute sort of wandering through a desert landscape and then the next scene might be, they might be at the bottom of the ocean. The film's shot in black and white. Uh, it initially, was sort of a, it was going to be a combination between colour and black and white. It ended up being just black and white. And I guess I felt that black and white was um, felt more earnest, or uh, if it could be earnest in a contrived way, then I would choose to have that sort of paradox. For me, black and white was um, more melancholic um, and had. A, conjured feelings of uh, longing uh, and of beauty and of nostalgia, I guess. Uh, and so I wanted the, 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 all these feelings as a, as a counterpoint to the overt comedy of the script. Um, aesthetically, it's, it's an earnest film and it does have a longing to it and a sadness to it about the loss of the wild and the, and the destruction of nature and how Zoos are now the last refuge for many of these animals. Um, so there is a sincerity there, despite the, the kind of the slapstick, fast-paced uh, dialogue. 